Welcome to MotivationAddict.com with Julie Salon. This is where you will find inspiring stories on how to motivate yourself and gain momentum towards success, turning fear into confidence, and how to find divine flow, allowing you to crush your goals. Thank you for being here. And now, let's tune in to today's show. Hey, everyone. This is Julie Salant from MotivationAddict.com. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have an amazing guest today. Her name is Alyssa Cleland. She is a para dressage rider, and she is competing, hopefully, for the 2024 Olympics. That's her goal. Um, so what's very interesting about her is she was born in the Ukraine, and she has a rare condition called praxial tibia hemelia, which affects one in a million people, and it's a really rare condition le- that left her without a tibia on her right leg. And she was adopted into the U.S., and she was fitted for a prosthetic limb. And she's been an active and tenacious athlete ever since. Um, She has been riding for a little over a year in paradressage. She had, I think it was just about a year ago, that she had her first uh, lesson on her horse. And she's really progressed quickly. So she's doing some great things. I'd love to chat with you today, Alyssa. Thank you so much for being here. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to answer your questions and get some insight for myself uh, with this podcast and all the other stories that I I listen to as this series progresses. And Alyssa is our first, bestest first (laughs) uh, interviewee for the podcast. So I'm super psyched. And just so you guys know, there's going to be a lot more to come. And this is specifically for equestrians, right? So we're going to talk about the things that um, a lot of times we'll be saying in the barn, but it seems like some people don't touch on mostly all positive, but, you know, we're going to bring up things like fear or um, communicating with your horse and how we can get better at that. And it's not from a trainer's perspective, it's from a rider's perspective and just being an equestrian. So it doesn't matter what discipline you are, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a dressage or a jumper or cross country, we all want to learn and we're all here to get better. So Alyssa is a para equestrian. So can you tell us a little bit about what that means and kind of how you got into riding, Alyssa? Yeah. Um, so to be like a para equestrian, um, it, it's uh, parallel to being an equestrian, basically. Um, but on the para side, you know, you have some sort of like disability. So I was born without my right leg, so I wear prosthetics now. And when I ride, I don't wear my prosthetics. So I only have the leg on my left side telling the horse basically what to do. Um, so I started riding when I was 10, um, I rode this really old horse named TB and she was awesome and my favorite. Um, and then riding really, it really dwindled down until, um, probably middle school, um, just because a lot of facilities wouldn't take me because of my prosthetic and it was just a big liability and they didn't want to risk it. Um, so when I was in middle school, I got my own horse cause we had enough property like around our house and we had a lot of trails behind our house. Um, and her name was Jojo and she loved me and I was the oh. only one that she let her ride. So anyone else she would try to like kick off or whatever. So it was great. I loved it. <laughs> so oh, awesome. yeah, we had, we had tons of adventures and she was, she was great. So, um, but she had arthritis. And so we let her out to retire and um, we moved to a different place in California that we only had teen tiny backyard. So, um, and then I moved to Oklahoma for college and stuff, um, and I was playing volleyball, and um, I quit that around, uh, after like two years, and decided to really pursue the horse thing, and I moved to Kansas to work at a Morgan show barn, um, and someone in passing while I was working there told me about paradressage and about like the association and uh, how I should like call the director and stuff, and so I did. Um, and so I ended up moving back to Oklahoma and started uh, driving every weekend to Texas to train with this um, Paralympic coach that um, had a few um, paraquestrians under his belt, like Katie Jackson and Roxy Trunell. And, um, you know, he's the chef to keep, I think that's how you say it, of the U.S. Paralympic mm-hmm. dressage team. So, um so he knows what he's doing. Um, so then obviously I moved to Texas a few months later and um, I've 
just kind of ride as often as I can and, you know, train as often as I can. What does your training schedule look like right now? So uh, I only train two days a week, um, but I'm there uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and sometimes maybe Fridays or Sundays, just depending on my schedule. Um, So I'm there more often than not uh, just riding and trying to keep Daytona in shape and, you know, making sure we're not losing anything. How did you find Daytona or, I mean, was it a, was it kind of something that you fell into at, and the horse was at the barn already that you started training at under that trainer? Um, yeah. So I was leasing um, another horse named Kathy and we did not like each other. She threw me off almost every single ride. And so oh after gosh. about, yeah, oh my, it was, she, oh my gosh. I remember one time we were at a show and we were in the warm-up ring, and she threw me off and ran away, and they had oh. to catch her. And by the time they caught her and brought her back, we had to go do our test. Mm. So it was just, yeah, it was just a mess. So after two months of that, I was like, I can't leave this horse anymore because I, I can't. And so then uh, Daytona was there not being ridden. Um, she used to be Roxy Trunell's horse before Roxy moved on to Florida. And so I started riding Daytona. And I've been riding her since, I mean, Danny for probably March now. Um, so, you know, a good five, six months. And we're just, we're just floating along, you know. We get along nice. really well. And she's super, super nice. So no complaints from my end. So when you're setting up your schedule with your trainer, do you, how do you decide what you want to accomplish that day, that week? Do you have like weekly goals or do you have uh, goals by, you know, the month or maybe towards the show? How does that work? So I just have, so like once I have like a show that I want to do, then it's kind of working to there. Um, I, I really trust my trainer on, you know, what I need to work on stuff. So, um, you know, he'll usually decide, like, all right, this we're going to work on this today or we're going to work on that today. And then um, the extra days that I'm there riding that he's not training me, I work on those things and try to, you know, get them better and better until, you know, they're fixed or something. Um, so I let him take care of what I need to work on. Um, as far as myself, like, there's some, like, personal things I need I know I need to work on like when I'm in the saddle and stuff and that I just kind of do subconsciously and just kind of as I continue to ride, it'll get better over time. Now, are you training the horse to do different things at a different level that the horse has never done before? I think yes and no. I think at one time she might have done it because I know when she was super, super young, like a four-year-old, she won like some big dressage classes and stuff. So I'm sure she's done it before, but now she's having to do it again. And it's kind of new to her, you know, she doesn't remember it or she kind of runs it faintly and can do it. So, but yeah, she's definitely uh, been there, done that kind of horse. I think she went to Rio for the past Paralympics with Roxy. And I mean, she's been to tons of horse shows and yeah, she's super experienced, which is great for me because I'm inexperienced. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's awesome because um, before we started talking, I sent Alyssa some questions. And one of the things that she talked about was that, that the horse stands there for her as she gets on, she kind of hops on. Um, And also in the cross ties, as you're getting your horse ready, she stands still as a statue. I thought that was so super important because everybody can learn from that, that she stands there until you're on and you're ready and then you go off. Yeah. And I mean, that's, super duper good for me because sometimes you know it takes me a little bit to like catch my balance or something like on the step that I take to get on her and she'll just she'll stand there and then kind of you know look at me and be like oh are you on yet because I'm ready to go like what are you doing and then obviously yeah when she's in the cross ties you know I'll have her all ready to go and then you know I have to take my leg off so I can start riding her and so I have to like go away from her and she'll just stand there and look at me and just kind of wait till I'm ready and then you know, we're ready to go. So it's, it's, it's really nice. And it's something that obviously not every horse will do, um, which is a struggle as I try to find a new horse. So things to think about. Now, are you looking for a new horse now, or are you planning to ride her into next year? 
Um, it's it's touch and go. Um, so I'm not the only one that rides her at the moment. There's another trainer there that does ride her and shows her and stuff. Um, so, but with getting a new horse, that requires sponsors and money, which I don't have. And so, um, you know, a lot of things have to fall into place before I can find my next partner. Um, and hopefully the partner that I can take to the Paralympics, whether it be 2020 or 2024. Right, right. And that's your ultimate goal is going to the Paralympics, right? Yes. That would be awesome. You'll make I it. Know. It's just a question of time. <laughs> I know you will because you're super dedicated from talking to you before, like from reading your answers because you train so much and you're there so much and it's such a big part of your life. And I'm sure you're like me where it's like I couldn't live without horses. I just I just feel like there's a complete void and I'm very unhappy. Yes. Right? Absolutely. It, yes. I feel like for me that I have – felt that that was the only place I felt complete acceptance. And I don't know mm-hmm. if you feel that way, but I've always felt a little bit, and I, just the animals themselves, they're just so accepting and they're so forgiving. Can you tell us a little bit about what horses have taught you? Yeah. I mean, I guess starting with Kathy, I mean, she taught me how to land on my seat almost every single time, which is a great skill to have. <laughs> um, oh, but I oh. think... <laughs> I need that. <laughs> but... <laughs> so but I mean Daytona being obviously the main one um, she's taught me a lot about patience because I have very 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 little patience with basically <laughs> everything <laughs> I do I really do it's bad but I mean you know when we're working on things obviously it doesn't just happen overnight you know and she might not always get it the first time around which can frustrate me a little bit but then you know yeah, I remember, uh, you know, your partner is this living, breathing creature that has its own mind. And, you know, they're going to do their own thing. And you got to respect that and you got to respect their boundaries. And so these things take time and you got you to gotta wait for them to figure it out. And, you know, once they do figure it out, then you can move on to the next thing. And so, you know, everything's happened within this, like, due diligence. And we've never been, like so far behind you know so it's never anything that's really impacted us it's just taught me that I have to be wary of her and let her take the time that she needs to figure it out and learn what she needs to learn to be comfortable and don't you think that with with horses like with people that routines really help with that because the more you do it, the, the more it's a routine instead of something, you know, new and, and scary and crazy. And, then, you know, the, it's just like anything, right? The more you do it, then the easier it gets and then the less afraid both you and your horse are. And then it's just, oh, it's like nothing, you know. It's just, but it's all about just keeping at it and not giving up, right? Exactly. And that's why I try to make it out to the barn as much as I can. Obviously, I can't go every day because I have, like, life outside of the barn unfortunately um (laughs) so i mean yeah we try to work on that as much as we can um and you know to keep up the training and to keep up her exercise and you know to keep everything fresh and new in her mind and you know um just gotta keep at it because it's not gonna happen on its own so what advice would you give someone who has had an accident or an injury and is maybe having a little bit of a hard time, not maybe even getting back up on their horse or they get up on their horse and their heart's pounding and they're super nervous because they may not trust themselves or they may not trust their horse because they're just having a little bit of a hard time kind of getting over the fact that they got hurt and it could have been seemingly innocent, right? But what what kind of advice could you give them that would help them kind of adjust to the new normal? I'd say just take it slow. You know, everything is one day at a time and it's going to suck for a long time, believe me. But, you know, eventually it's going to get to that point where you're going to be okay. And, you know, you're slowly going to regain your confidence and whether that's just, you know, you're not riding a horse and just trying to gain confidence in yourself or if that's trying to gain confidence when you're riding, you know, take it slow. You know, your horse has to figure out what your new normal is, you know, on top of you figuring out what your new normal is. So it's, and you got to give them that time to adjust to that, you know. Um, The person that owned Daytona before me, you know, had all their limbs 
they just um, they had some like uh, rotation issues with like their hips and stuff, so they couldn't really move around. Uh, she was wheelchair bound, um, and so you know I was probably you know only a handful of people that have ridden her that are missing a limb, you know. So it's mm-hmm. been a whole stretch of her trying to figure out, like, oh, well, what's missing on this side? Why is she trying to ask for this but not giving me the right cues I need? And so, you mm-hmm. know, trying to figure out that, and she's like, well, what's wrong with this person? You know, she's slowly getting it little by little. You know, you can see it with, like, the canter cues especially. Um, she, We can do a better right canter cue without the leg on my right side than we can a left canter with my leg. I do not understand it, but she is wow. so good about cantering on the right side. I like she just gets it. And so wow. it's like little things like that. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta trust your horse that they are going to be able to, to do their job. Let me tell you. I've ridden a handful of horses this morning and some worked great and some didn't, you know. Let's talk about mindset a little bit because that brings up a great that's that's what I love to talk about and mindset when you're riding, mindset before you get on the horse. So do you how do you prepare mentally or do you prepare mentally to get on your horse or are you just one of those people who just gets on and goes and you have your your goal in mind and then you just go for it and you're in it? I don't <laughs> really prepare mentally. Um and I've been told I have a hot seat. So I make the horses a little crazy, and I don't know why, (laughs) Mm -hmm. but um, Daytona and I have gotten really good. You know, when we're just kind of walking around, warming up, I talk to her. I talk to her a lot about everything. You know, I point this out. I point this out. I, I'll even sing to her sometimes. Like, it's, it's like, I just want her to, like, let her know that, like, I'm there and we're here to work. And, you know, then we just get into it. And so, and she's constantly listening to me. If you, you know, see us riding, like, her ear is always to me. If I'm standing next to her, her ear is always to me, which is why we can never get a good picture because she's like, Mom, what's going on? What are you saying? What are you doing? So, you know, I, I don't really prepare mentally before I get on the horse, but during, like, the warm-ups or the cool-downs, I'll just, you know, tell her she's a great girl, tell her I love her, tell her, like, oh, look, there's a mirror right there. Oh, look, look at that leaf. Look at that bird flying. You know, I'll just, I'll just talk to her so she knows that, you know, I'm there and it's continuous. I think that's so important because – um, having that communication with them is, as you said, they're really amazing creatures and they're second beings and they're super smart, way smarter than we give them credit for, I think. Yeah. And they understand. And they may not understand the words that you're saying, but they understand the energy behind you and your intentions and that you love her and you want to work with her and it's going to be fun yeah. and we're going to, and even if we go through some trials, it's as one of my one of the best trainers I ever had said, there's nothing that you can do that we can't fix. There's nothing yeah. you can like we can always fix things. So don't take things I take things like super seriously and I wanna Oh my god, me too. Out of myself. <laughs> you know, are you one of those yes. people too like you get mad at yourself, like, Oh, I'm so mad like not really even at the horse, like kind of be like yourself, like Oh, I should have done that. I should have known that. Yes. Damn it, you know? you know, I think about right? everything afterwards, and you're like, well, dang it. <sighs> yeah. Yes, definitely. But, but you know what? A lot of that stuff, um, one tool that I like to give people is, and it's so simple, is to make sure that you drop all your negative energy before you even see your horse. Because you remember that they are – taking in all of your energy around you and everything around them as well. So if you've had a really bad day and you're not kind of cognizantly clearing that and getting rid of that bad energy, then that's going to go to them and then they can get frustrated and nervous and upset before you've even started. So it can be super helpful to just really kind of, you can do it before you're, in the, you know, you can do it in your car, but, you can do it before you greet your horse to just put yourself, you know, take a couple of deep breaths and put yourself in a really great place. And that would be your happy place, which is wherever yeah. you are happiest in the world. It can be on your horse. It can be at the beach. It can be wherever your happy place is. And just think about that in your mind's eye and see yourself. You're just, you know, enjoying life. You're smiling. You're happy and kind of letting yourself relax 
and then getting into that happy place, like energetically, you know, energy wise, so that by the time you open your door or you go to greet your horse, that you're in a really positive, like, hey, if if you can do that naturally, then that's awesome. But if you're somebody who yeah. might struggle with that, then that can be a game changer so that you're not bringing all your junk from maybe your bad day at work to your home. Yeah. So something that on them can be a really kind of, it's it's a process to, to get that out and then start back at square one to learn what you want to learn for the day. And it seems like you're already at that point and you've made great strides doing that by picking up, she picks up on what you want to teach her. Do you hold yeah. like anything in your mind as to like, okay, we want to try this. Let's just try this canter this way. We know it's been a bit of a challenge. So let's try and smooth it out a little bit. Uh, I mean, sometimes I, I, I do more visualize, visualization, um, like during shows and stuff when like I have to do like certain movements and, you know, all the steps that dressage tests take. Um, but when we're in training, I kind of go for it more. Um, so it, it's just kind of hard for me, though, because like sometimes when I'm writing or, you know, I'm trying to stay focused, my mind will just go blank and I'm just doing it without thinking about it. So that's yeah. kind of where it gets a little iffy on, you know, uh, if I think that far ahead or not. It's it's amazing. Whatever you picture in your mind, they will pick up on that picture. So if you think of, okay, I'm going to slow down now, just and then just think that thought, really simple thought, your horse will start to get that because yeah. you're – riding them at such a, a, a level that you're you're getting each other's signals energetically and in what's in your mind, they will start to pick up on that. So try it just for fun. Just try it. You know, like just put yeah. a simple picture in your mind. Like we're just gonna slow down now and see yourself see yourself visually slowing down. Really short, really simple and see if she does it. Because oh, I will. sometimes my experience has been that they will actually slow down. Or if I'm I hold my breath a lot sometimes when because I'm thinking so much I overthink things yeah and I don't know I forget to breathe I have that same problem so does she ever go (sighs) does she ever do that when you're like thinking a lot does she ever like breathe like (sighs) because yeah I take a deep breath huh yeah like that's her calming signal to you for you to breathe and then when you breathe she breathes again, like <gasps> like a big breath. So, so yeah. horses give us calming signals all the time. It's just um, it could be simple as something as simple as that. That's been my experience where I'm always forgetting to breathe, and my trainer's like, "You gotta breathe," and then my horse will just be all of a sudden go like big deep breath, and I'll be like, "Okay, that's my signal." Like, and then I take a deep breath, and then then he comes down even more. So, think, little things like that. Just try that. I'd love to get some feedback from you if you just tried something super simple like that and see if see if she picks up on it because I bet she would. Yeah. Ooh, I'm going to try that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, see? I mean, I, I think that horses are just so accepting of us and so forgiving. I can tell you that I'm, I'm sure that every listener out there has made a gazillion mistakes on their horse and nobody's perfect and we're all trying to get better every day. And horses are the same because I always say today's horse is not yesterday's horse or tomorrow's horse because you can do something flawlessly today and tomorrow you can get on her and she could, it's not going to, it may not happen. It may be like, wait, yeah. why aren't we able to do this? We did this yesterday perfectly. And yeah. I feel like we have to be as forgiving to them as they are to us. Have you experienced that as well, like a, a lot of forgiveness from her and also from yourself to her, like both back and forth? Yeah, um, a lot, especially like when we were first starting out and trying to get like all the like all the cues um, done and everything. Like we had a lot of problems cantering because um, I, I just I can't hold on to the reins when I canter. Like I just lose them. Um, so I just I hold on like super tight and she did not appreciate that at all. Um, and so, you know, it was a lot of trial and error, but, you know, eventually she'll like, if I, if I like ask for the canner and I pull too hard, she'll like put her head up every single time to like tell me like, Hey, 
I don't like that. You better stop it. And so finally, yeah. like, you know, I get it right a few times and she'd be okay. And so, but then, you know, I get a little tense and I do it again. She put her head up to be like, hey, stop it. And, you know, I get the hint. And so a lot of things like that. Um, so yeah, she's been she's been super forgiving of me with, you know, everything we've been trying to learn and every new thing our trainer has us do. Um, so she's, she's been awesome. Um, and I mean, there's nothing to forgive her for because she's a perfect unicorn. <laughs> Aww. And she's always trying, right? That's the main thing. Yes, exactly. I feel like you always have to reward the try, even if it's, it, as one person told me, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty you know you, if you do it especially the first time it's like if you just do it it's okay it doesn't have to be gorgeous because that comes later but we always have yeah. to reward the try because sometimes they try so hard and I see other riders not even ever tell them like you know that's a good boy or that's a good girl and that breaks my heart because they they really need that they need that enthusiasm because if they don't have that, then they're like, I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I'm, I'm trying everything I can think of, and yeah. you're still not happy with me. What do I? Yeah. What am I doing? You know? Yeah, I, I try mean, to reward so, her for everything. Yeah, exactly. Because you get so far with it. So after you are done riding, do you guys just hang out a little bit and chill out and do fun stuff together too? Yeah, um, a little bit. I mean, usually it's just waiting for her to, like, cool off or something, or sometimes I'll give her a bath and just wait for her to dry. Um, but she loves, she loves the Flicks treats from Horse Guard. Without a doubt, she will do anything for those things. Um, so, yeah, but we just, we just hang out and just, you know, cool, cool down. And I usually groom her a little bit, you know, get her tail all, um, I don't know, get all the tangles out of her tail and just yeah. try to make her as pretty yeah. as possible because she attracts dirt like no other horse. And she's t- so, like, tall that, like, I can barely get on her butt to, like, clean it all off. <laughs> so I How try tall to, is she? Try to do she's, like, 16'3. Oh, my she's goodness. Tall. Yeah, oh she's goodness. a big girl. So, but, How old yeah, is she? 16. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So what – what shows do you have coming up? Or do you have anything coming up for the rest of this year, or are you starting fresh next year? So we're done with this year. Um, and the next year is kind of up in the air depending on, like, sponsors and, you know, um, all that fun stuff because I can't afford to do this on my own anymore. Um, so we do – we I, there's a CP EDI in – June or July, I believe, in California, which is my next goal to make it to. Um, I get reclassified in January, so hopefully I'll go um, a grade or two down, um, which will make me more competitive and all that fun stuff. So, um, you know, everything is just depending on all this other outside resources that I need to, you know, compete at a higher level. What does it take to get a sponsor? Because I'm I have no idea what is there a process to it? How does it work? I I am in the dark. I honestly have no idea. Um so I, I hired um a marketing company, Intrigue, um and so, you know, they're kinda taking over me basically and they'll present me to companies and be like, Hey, this girl's awesome. Sponsor her. Um, so, you know, either that sponsorship with like products or monetary sponsorship or a horse sponsorship, you know, you know, any, anything helps at this point. So, um, you know, I, I really think to get the big and important sponsors, you need people with like this company to, you know, really help you because I could never do it on my own. Yeah, and Intrigue is amazing. I use them as well. That's how we got hooked up, and they are yes. amazing. And they're so um, generous with their hookups and their help. Their and, time. And, yeah. Yes. They're, I call them my girls, but they're not, obviously. They're, they're, they're marketing gurus, and they are amazing. If you guys ever need help in that area, I'll put some links down yes. below of the podcast because um, I've been with them for a while and they're doing amazing things. They can help with, you know, putting you out there for sponsorship. They can help with, if you're a writer, W-R, not R-I-D-E-R, writer, um, for magazines or getting published. They just, uh, that's what they do. That's their jam. So 
and they're amazing. And I'm the type of person who comes to the table with a million ideas, but I'm not sure how to, you know, execute. And they put that all kind of make it easy for me, kind of like your trainer does, right? Make it simple yeah. so that I can focus on one thing instead of 50 things because I'm thinking about 50 things instead of one thing, and that's what I need to do. So exactly, super good like that. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. That's it. We got hooked up through them. So kudos to those guys because they're amazing. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I'm hoping that you're going to get some sponsorship. And I'm hoping that you're, I know you're going to do well because I feel like I saw, and I'll put some links down below. Um, Lisa has a really good, uh, I think it's three or four minutes um, kind of um, on YouTube. What she does, it shows her riding, it shows her on her horse, and it kind of explains, you know, kind of her day and, and how she goes about getting the horse ready and how she kind of how she rides and it's kind of I really like that video list because it was really nice it just kind of shows you and kind of what you do and what you're about and um, do you make a lot of YouTube videos or is that something you're going to be doing in the future um it's something I want to do in the future so I actually have a guy that um you know follows me around and shoots all the video and then he edits it and then he posts it for me. Um, so once I get the solo sponsor thing going, you know, I can pay him to make me more great content to get out there and stuff. So, but yeah, he's awesome. And he's, he's really, he's really, uh, I, I have no words because everything he produces for me is just, it's just great. So, um, but yes, I do want to make more just to, you know, show, you know, the paraquestrian side and, you know, we can do it too, you know, um, well, and just can. how it all works. Of course you can. And I think it's really cool that you're doing that. And I think that it's really admirable because it's one thing to, you know, horses, as we know, they have their own minds, right? I mean, they're just yeah. uh, their own beings. And sometimes, you know, the other thing is, Sometimes they have good days and sometimes they don't have good days, just like people, right? We have oh, awesome yeah. days and we're feeling super strong and, right, you know, all cylinders will go and then days where it's like we're tired or we just don't have any energy. And that's the same thing with them. So you could be having the best day ever and your horse may not be. Or vice versa. Yeah. When you're both on, that's a pretty amazing, fantastic day because it doesn't happen all the time. But we have to be kind of cognizant of that. So how do you handle it when you're having like a really, really good day, but maybe she's not or vice versa? Do you call it quits early or do you kind of just work through it the best you can? How do you handle it? Um, I don't really call it quits early, but I definitely, we just take it really slow. Sometimes we'll just walk the whole time if she's not feeling it, you know, um, cause I don't want to stress her out even more trying to, you know, ask her to do all these movements and exercises and all that fun stuff. So um, I still want to get her, like, working and moving and exercising because obviously I don't want her to just sit there all day. Um, so, you know, even if it's just stretching her legs for 30 minutes, that's what we'll do, you know, because even if she's yeah. having a bad day, because it's not fair for her to just sit in her stall when it's my responsibility to ride her. Um, right. So, yeah, so we just take it slow and easy and – try to de-stress as much as possible, you know, take some extra time at the end to groom her and show her some love and, you know, all that kind of stuff to make her feel yeah. good and better. Yeah, and as my, my trainer always said, you can always work on that circle. You can always work on your bends. I mean, there's yeah. so many things you can do. And then I try to do something fun like the Spanish walk. I'm trying to get, you know, he's picking that up really quickly because my horse is, so super smart it's almost scary so I feel like <laughs> for him I mean I have to give him things that are different because he gets bored like I'm always talking about the 20 minute 20 meter circle because you know I um I I ride for fun I used to show not so, not so much anymore but I completely respect the sport I respect dressage and um but sometimes we can all get bored doing the same thing I mean and I think one time, you know, my trainer was like, you know, your horse is just bored. Like, we need to bring in something different. So we brought in some cones, and we put some cones down, and then we started going, you know, in and out of the cones and around, just practice bending and stuff. And he loved yeah. it, and he turned, he kind of lit up like a Christmas tree, like, wow, something different. Because yeah. so I feel like we can maybe we could do something fun um, and out of the norm, and that kind of breaks it a little, breaks it up a little bit for them instead of the same, you know, routine. Because they get stressed out too. Yeah. 
Definitely, and yeah. Have, have you experienced, has your horse gotten stressed out, or is she pretty good about kind of doing her thing? And then, you know, there are some horses that have a great work ethic, and they can work, 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 but when the saddle's off, they just completely relax. And some are yeah. the opposite, where they really need to, that you know, they can't switch off. Which one is she? Does she kind of relax once the saddle's off? She kind of goes right back to just chilling out? Yeah, she's she's really level-headed. Um, but, I mean, once the saddle's on, you know, she knows what's going on and what she needs to do. And so we'll do our little training session. And, you know, sometimes we'll go outside or, you know, we'll stay inside. Um, I prefer inside because she doesn't like the outside very much. But we do it when we have to. Um, so we just, you know, I I – I don't know. I'm not a big, I'm, I like my routine. You know, I, I get up every morning and I do the same thing every day to start my day. Um, so I'm a big routine kind of person. Um, yeah. And so I try to keep a routine with her as well. Um, so, but I mean, once the saddle's off, she's, she's relaxed. All she wants is her treats and to go to bed and she'll be happy. <laughs> so um, I kind of lucked out with that. Oh, <laughs> that's good. That's awesome. Yeah. I don't know what we do without horses in our lives. I I can't imagine living without one. Um, do you? What are your plans? Like, what's your ten year plan? Do you plan on um, having your own place with keeping your horse at your house someday, or what are your plans? So ultimately, my plan. <laughs> so my ultimate plan is to you know eventually have a house, um, and I I want a barn, you know, maybe just like a you know, 12 stall barn that, you know, maybe I can lease out some of the stalls to make some income. Um, but I want, cool. you know, yeah, but I want a few horses um, to be, uh, what is it, like out in a pasture because, you know, horses should live outside. That's the best way, you know, that they should be living. So a few horses out in the pasture, a few donkeys, a few goats, you know, I just, I want my little farm. Um, and then, Aww. yeah, and so then obviously I'll have, you know, my own horse there that, you know, either I have my trainer come to my place or I trailer that horse to the facility. Um, but, yeah, I think it would be great to have my dressage horse, you know, on my property so I can keep track of them 100% of the time. That would be amazing. That's my dream, but I haven't accomplished it yet. My horse is about... 20 minutes from me, but and that's pretty oh, good because I used so to travel nice, over though. an hour each way. <laughs> yeah, I travel about 40 minutes to get to my horse, so. I mean, we do no what we got to do. Sometimes it gets grueling, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it is what it is, but I get so happy when I'm at the barn, right? I couldn't. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. It's worth the drive. Couldn't, couldn't imagine doing it. Now, what do you do outside of this? What do you do for work? Um, so I work for a land surveying company. Oh, cool. And okay. Yeah. So um, I'm what's called a drafter. So once, like, the land surveys come in, I draw them up on, like, a computer program. So that way, you know, the customer has something to actually look at. Um, so I do that. Um, and then I'm trying to kind of create, like, a blog. I'm currently working on two websites, one, like, a personal website and one for the horse stuff. So I'm trying to trying to get more um, a, out there and trying to become like an entrepreneur so I can, you know, make money by myself without having to depend on like a nine to five. So that way, you know, I can make my own schedule and, you know, not have to go to the barn at seven o'clock at night. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm I mean, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Melissa. And, yeah, you know, I think that you could really encourage, I don't know if you'd ever consider speaking. I mean, have you ever... I mean, I don't know if it's ever crossed your mind or anything, but it seems like you would do really well helping, you know, maybe other para questions who maybe are just starting out or maybe they're thinking about it and kind of let them know that this is a really cool road for them to, to be on and, and that there are horses and trainers out there that can help them and give you confidence and just kind of show you the way. That might be yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. But uh, it's... It's all, it's all a grind. It's all part of trying to work towards a better future and obviously getting connected with the right people and resources and, you know, figuring yep. all that stuff out. So you we'll said, see. You we'll said see. something. 
you said something to me. Well, uh, you know, I, I, you read it, uh, you wrote it to me, and I was um, going to ask you about this, and it was that you said that you wouldn't change anything and that everything happens for a reason. And I kind of wanted to ask you, you know, a lot of people wouldn't say that about themselves or their lives. They look at things as kind of with regret, like, oh, I wish this didn't happen. Or can you tell me a little bit about why you you wrote that and kind of what your thoughts are behind it? Yeah. Um, You know, um, I've always grown up without a lake. You know, I was born without it. Um, You know, and if I wasn't, I wouldn't have, you know, had all these crazy opportunities, you know, I wouldn't be playing volleyball, which then that leads me to working at a show barn in Kansas, which then leads me to, you know, getting in touch with the director for pair dressage, which then leads me to, you know, going to Texas every weekend to train, which, you know, now leads me to this point in my life. Um, you know, I wouldn't have met the people I've met. I wouldn't have done things I've done um, without not having my leg. And, you know, even without that, um, I wouldn't have been able to be in Texas without, you know, getting in touch with those people in Kansas. Um, and so, you know, right. everything – Everything is, you know, it it can seem like terrible, like you're in a terrible place in your life and, you know, that all these bad things are happening. But, you know, eventually you're going to look back on your life and be like, oh, yeah, that had to happen because, you know, I had to grow or I had to learn or I had to, you know, go through this so that way this could happen. So, you know, everything is planned out. And, you know, even though you don't see it, obviously if someone sees it and, you know, knows where you need to be at certain times in your life to make certain things happen for you. I totally agree. And sometimes you, a lot of times, honestly, you can't see the why behind it or the big picture. You're just like, I I don't get it. Like, this doesn't make sense to me. And then it could take, you know, a little while. And then you're like, oh, yeah, this, this really made me super strong. So I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm stronger on my own now. I can stand on my own two feet. So I think that that's super important. And it's, can be hard sometimes, especially because it's always challenging, right? It's never easy. Yeah. But no, it's definitely something that uh, I have gone through myself because at this age, I'm a lot older than you are, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody goes through stuff, you know, and, you know, nobody's perfect. And I've, I mean, I've always felt really alone because I'm so empathic and because I can feel things and I have, you know, people didn't really understand me because I am thinking and feeling things on a different level than they are. And I'm also understanding what the horses are saying to me with their images. So it's kind of a lot of energy and coming at me where normal or other people don't feel it at all. So yeah. it's kind of like going to a movie and somebody's bawling and crying and the person next to them is like, I don't get it. What's wrong with you? Yes. So, right. I get and, that a hundred percent. And and that is um, just because everybody feels things differently and everybody people are on different levels. But the main point of that is that if you, a lot of times when somebody says that to you over and over, they kind of look at you like something's wrong with you, like what's wrong with you? Stop doing what you're doing, but you're like just reacting because that's how you're built. There's nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's just that you're different than they are, which means that if you feel things differently, it's just that a lot of times gifted people, others don't understand their gifts, and so they will make fun of them because they don't understand it because they're uncomfortable, right? So, But then what happens is the person that is gifted takes that internally and is like, "Uh, I don't want to show this again because it makes me vulnerable and I don't feel good because somebody just made fun of me. So that whole that whole piece of it is why I turned to horses and felt that they were so accepting of me and really just the sentient beings that they are. I feel always privileged and honored to be in their presence. I feel always honored that they're going to let me ride them because that's a big yeah. deal to me. You know, they just pop on and go. It's, it's kind of like they're giving you a real gift, no matter what level you are, no matter what discipline, no matter what you do. It should always kind of be... You should always kind of be like, thank you for that. That's just the way yeah. I feel. It is a big deal. I mean, you don't want somebody hopping on you and, you know, doing the piggyback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No. <laughs> Think about it, you know. I mean, so 
I just um, I just really love that they're always you know give forgiving and respectful and loving creatures, and I think that they give us these calming signals that I was telling you about, and they're trying to help us all the time, but it's just that sometimes yeah. we don't see it because we're in our mind. We've all been there. We've all got a lot going on, and yes. it's not like we're not doing anything than, other than just riding. Most of us are not professionals. We're amateurs, and we're just trying to get better every day, and we've got work, and we've got home stuff, and we come to... I come to the barn, I say it's my Zen place. Like, this is what I work for. I work for that time, whether he's grazing or I'm riding or he's just lunging. This is what I live for. Like, this this connection is what makes me a whole human. Without this connection, I'm not, I'm not happy at all. Yeah. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, definitely, yeah. 100%. I don't know what I'd do if Daytona didn't let me ride her and probably yeah. really just cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and and this is why they're coming out with studies that horses are helping PTSD soldiers. They're also helping women that have been abused. And my theory yeah. is that they help other people who are empathic or sensitive um, because they just know how to help us be more courageous and have more faith in ourselves and more forgiving of ourselves. And self-acceptance is probably a huge part of riding because, no matter, even if you're just riding for fun, you have to know that there are days where you suck, right? As a human, yeah. you suck. And self-acceptance is probably one of the biggest things that they've taught me because, yeah, okay, I had a bad day. You know, I, I definitely did not execute. I definitely was all over the place. Yeah, I, I was just, I'll own up to that. But they still love and respect you even after that. So we have to give that yeah. back to them too. I mean, yeah. do you, did you ever have any issues with self-acceptance yourself that the that they've helped you with, or were you always pretty okay with kind of this is who I am and I'm I'm okay even if I mess up today? I think like at a certain point, you know, I just kind of I don't know hit me like a wall. Like, well, I'm I'm not changing, so you know, this is me as as I am. Take it or leave it, you know. Um, so I've been pretty pretty gay okay with myself you know obviously I have days where you know I'm like wow so like you messed up big time um but obviously that happens to everyone um so I'm I'm pretty self-accepting of myself um you know the horseback riding just kind of gives me a little bit more confidence or you know sometimes it slaps me in the face and it's like hey you're kind of screwing up um so I mean you know give and take um Get it but together, I, girl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm trying. So, but, um, yeah, I just, you know, it it can help you and just, I don't know, it just makes me feel a lot better when I'm at the barn just because, you know, the second I see my horse, like, everything just kind of drains away from me. I'm like, wow, that's, I get to be with you. Like, that's incredible. Like, thank you. Um, yeah. So it just, yeah. Yeah, but other than that, I'm pretty self-accepting of myself and everything I have to offer anyone. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome, and that that's a good lesson for for everybody because sometimes we're not accepting of ourselves, especially after you know an injury or sometimes yeah. people take time off and then they're so far behind. They think they're behind on the schedule that they have in their head of where they should be, yeah. and that can be a huge barrier if you're not like, okay, this is where I am. Like, I mean, it is what it is, right? I mean, it's kind of like your weight. If you're above, you know, where your target is, then you, that's where you are. Like, but it's okay because as long as you accept that and then you're working towards something different, whatever, you know, whatever your goal is, that's okay. It's just a matter of understanding that you are where you are and it's okay. And, things are going to change and you're going to work on it and things will be different. So yeah, but just enjoy the ride because the whole thing is a journey with these horses. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's not like one ride, you know, it's, it's a journey and it's also a lot of facets to their personality too, that they, they show you, they don't show you all at once. They, they, yeah, take their time. Yes, definitely. So, oh my God. Yeah. But Daytona's personality is, pretty pretty great although she definitely like has her moments where she's just full-fledged mayor which is okay i'll accept yeah. it so yeah. we're doing. 
Yeah, yeah. Does she um does she have like a funny personality where she likes to kind of you know play tricks or like because my horse is like that like he's always kind of like snickering like okay let's get her doing this or I don't know he's just he's always it's not in a mean way he's not he's not being mean he's just kind of like if he's really bored he's gonna be like we're going this way and like my ring yeah like, oh, what, what? Like, <laughs> I wasn't prepared for that that's not fair <laughs> and we're going in a totally different direction which is on me so but um it sounds like you know she's got like a good sense of humor is what I'm trying to say yeah a little bit um she she's just very level headed um she i don't know like she, i don't know like i don't know how like to describe her she's just so i don't know she's just so like herself like she just has like little quirks here and there like whenever i try to like give her a treat she'll like take my entire hand with her and like try to eat it as it's a treat <laughs> She will follow me from like her stall to like the where the cross ties with like no lead rope, which is great. Although I always have one attached just for a case. So she does not. She loves baths, but she does not like her head to get wet at all. Oh my god, she'll throw a fit. So and then like riding wise, she's pretty. She's pretty good. I mean, she'll, I don't know, there's, like, some things, some days where, like, she, like, will not go near at all because she'll think it's going to kill her. Um, <laughs> and then other days she'll be, like, totally fine. So it's a little give and take there. But I mean, yeah, she's pretty, pretty, pretty mellow, pretty, pretty solid. So she's definitely a horse that, you know, I trust, you know, 99% of the time um, I, I can feel when she's having an off day and then that makes me kind of a little bit on edge but you know I can like feel it and I, I know but just little things like that so that she's she's just great and she just makes me super super happy and so I'm just lucky that I get to be with her as much as I can. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I can't thank you enough for spending some time with me. I really, really appreciate your time. I think you're doing awesome things. I'm incredibly impressed with you and the riding that you're doing. And I'm so thankful that I got to chat with you today. And I think that you can really offer other riders a lot of insight and hope into their riding abilities because, you know, face it, I mean, some of us are, you know, we struggle with trying to get better and sometimes you don't feel like you're making any headway. So it's really awesome to talk to somebody who is making headway and knowing that there is, you know, you're going to get better. There is always Uh a way to get better. And I can't thank you enough for speaking with me. I think you're doing great. And I think it's just a matter of time before you get a sponsor and let's stay in touch with each other because I really want to, I would love to help you any way that I can. And you know what? Send us, some, you know, blog posts, I can put them up on my website. And if you um, have videos, we can, you know, swap those too, because I'd love to help you because I think you're going to go really far, especially, you know, in some of the goals that you have, which are pretty amazing. I think you're going to do really well, no doubt in my mind, because you have a really good attitude. So thank you, Alyssa. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you for having me. It was so awesome to do this and be a part of this. And I can't wait to see you know where this goes i can't wait for like your podcast to come out and to listen to all the other incredible stories that are going to come from this yeah exactly right because nothing happens by chance i think everything happens for a reason so yeah you know what i mean then it would be great maybe we can meet someday but let's definitely stay in touch i'm super impressed with you thank you so much Alyssa, for your time i really appreciate it of course okay Thanks, Alyssa. We'll stay in touch. And I'm going to give links to – you have a you have a website, right, Alyssa, people can go it's to? It's in the works. Okay. So as soon as I get that from her, which I will get soon, I can put the links down below so that everybody can go to her website. I can put the link of the YouTube so people can watch the video that you did. And then um, we'll try and get some traction. I'm sure the, the girls, our little friends at Entry, will get some sponsorship. And we'll just keep putting the word out. And then when you have content, we'll just put it up and we'll just help each other. That's the way it works. Yes, that sounds perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alyssa. Thank you. And good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.